Hey, this is Isara with UX in Motion, and I have another exciting tutorial for you today. And we're gonna be focusing on Google Material Design Authentic Motion, specifically the old point of origin um, animation here and interaction. So this is a piece of cake. It's gonna be a real quick, quick one for you. And let's jump into it. So what I've got here, I'm gonna show you my PSD because the setup of this is pretty critical and is going to make a difference in how quickly you can jump in and make this happen in your project. So you'll notice that I have a, a little content box here. I've got the nav here and I've got the BG. I'm just literally recreating exactly what you see here on the, uh, on the google.com slash design spec animation uh, page here for responsive interaction. So we're doing exactly that. So what we have here, the main thing that I uh, want to call out is that we're using a drop shadow effect in Photoshop. Now what's cool about After Effects is it supports layer styles. So if you have one on your layer in Photoshop, you can just bring it into After Effects and you can animate it. If you're working in Illustrator or if you're working in Sketch and you want to bring your file into After Effects, you can add the layer style in After Effects um, manually. So you can bring it in without a layer style and then add it manually. And I'll show you how to do that in this lesson. But I'm going to start in Photoshop with the, uh, with the layer style already applied, the drop shadow, this guy right here. Boom. Okay, and that's pretty much it. That's all you need to know. So let's go over and import this bad boy into After Effects. So I'm just gonna Command I, and I'm going to find my PSD, and I'm gonna bring it in Composition Retain Layer Sizes. You always wanna do that for your UI animation projects. Make sure your layer styles are editable. If they are on Merge, I'm gonna show you what happens so that you don't do that. So here we have our composition, and I'm just gonna quickly show you that when you scale, uh, your layer here, you'll see that the layer style is actually scaling with your layer, right? If I zoom in here, it's now smaller, and we don't want that, okay? We want the layer style to actually not be affected, we just want to affect the layer itself. And it's there's a really simple, easy way to do that. So if you did merge your uh, layer style, you can always control click on your layer and say layer styles convert to editable styles. And now if I go ahead and scale this, watch what happens. See that? The layer style is not actually scaling with the layer. It's just staying exactly as it is. And that's what we want. So that's how you would do that. Now if you don't have a layer style applied, what you can do, I'm just going to make a new quick reference layer right here. We'll make it blue just to freak you out. And I'm going to scale it in a little bit so you can see what we're doing. You can always control click your layer and go to your layer styles and I can just manually add a drop shadow in that way and I can uh, go ahead and mess with those settings and do some really cool stuff you know mess with the distance and all that kind of stuff and now if it's a live layer style if I was to scale this layer the layer style is not scaling with the layer so that's how you would add it if you were um, coming in from Illustrator or Sketch but we're actually jamming in Photoshop so let's do that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over 34 frames, and that's where I always uh, like to start. I'm working at 60 frames a second, which is where I recommend you work at. And if you're not seeing these frames here, just command click in this little window and it toggles between time code and frames. So I like to start at frame 34. Um, I have a bunch of special animation numbers that I like to use, and that's one of them. So if you hit Option S, make sure your layer's selected. Hit Option S to put a scale keyframe down on your layer. You'll notice that you're not seeing the handles here even though the layer is selected. That's because I hit Command Shift H when I was previewing this for you. And Command Shift H is a great little keyboard shortcut. It hides, it toggles the uh, layer controls. Sometimes you're working on uh, small elements and it gets in the way. So that's a good way to deal with that. So. I'm just gonna add, so I added my keyframe here and I just um, have the, <laughs> the layer handles back on again, sweet. Now, notice something here, when I scale, you know, it scales around this anchor point, right? This is the anchor point here. This anchor point is what tells After Effects a bunch of cool stuff. In this case, in the scale property, it tells you where we wanna scale it around. 
Now, you'll notice in the animation, just to refresh your memory, not like you need it, it's a pretty simple one, but we're scaling from the corner right here. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna manipulate this anchor point right here. We're gonna drag it down into the corner. So there's a tool for this, it's really easy. If you hit Y on your keyboard, it brings up the pan behind or anchor point tool. I don't even know what the pan behind means. I just use it as the anchor tool. It's Y on the keyboard. Now you can click your anchor point, drag it around, and you'll notice it'll snap if you have snapping turned on. If you don't, I recommend you turn it on. And now, if I scale, boom, it's gonna scale from that point only. And that's really, really cool. So that's basically how you do it. So you've watched, you've you've gotten the gist of this. Now I'm just gonna build out the, the uh, like animation. And I happen to know from timing it previously, it's about 17 frames long at 60 frames a second. So I'm gonna jump over 17 frames. Um, one, two, and back to three, that's 17. I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard, option S. Zoom in on my timeline a little bit here. And I'm gonna go to my previous keyframe now and put that at zero. And I can see if I just scrub through real quick, we have blocked out the animation. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish blocking out the animation and then I'm gonna finesse my velocity curves. So you can continue watching if that's what you wanna check out. So now I'm gonna convert these guys. I'm actually gonna extend this animation now and complete it. So we've animated it opening and now we're gonna animate it closing. So if I jump over 40 frames here, I can actually copy and paste these two keyframes that I created now it just duplicates them, that's not exactly what I want. What I want are these two keyframes reversed over here. If I control click with both these keyframes selected and I go down to keyframe assistant time reverse, it'll actually swap these for me. Now I could just you know, click and drag this guy and essentially do that myself. It's just, I just happen to like that, uh, that, con that little uh, <laughs> command. So again, I just copy, I'm gonna, Make sure I'm at uh, 40 frames out. And this is not prescriptive. You don't have to be at uh, 40 frames. I just think this kind of works. Control click, key, keyframe assistant, time reverse, boom. And now if I close my work area by hitting N for end and I preview that, you'll see that we have in fact blocked out the animation. And now all that remains is to create the velocity curves. So if I collect my, my scale property once, it selects all the keyframes, and if I control click, I can go down to keyframe assistant, and this time, easy ease, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in my values here. I can pop over to the graph editor and have a better view of what it is I'm gonna be creating. Now the Google uh, material design guidelines calls for easing in and easing out for this kind of animation because it's so short you're not going to be applying a whole lot of easing and if you watch if we play this again you'll see that it it just kind of eases at the start and it eases at the end it's not a lot it's not dramatic but it's a little bit so i'm going to plug in some numbers here and if i select this keyframe you can see i have a handle i can just manually drag this out and uh and if you're totally confused by this point um I got here, you click in the graph editor tool, and if you're unfamiliar with After Effects, you can go ahead to my uh, domain, uxemotion.net, and download the free uh, After Effects animation, UI animation fast start training. You just put in your email and I'll send it to you, and it, it's just a real quick fast start on how to prototype your designs in After Effects. So if you're totally lost, go watch that and come back here. I'm gonna go ahead and customize this keyframe data here and put in some numbers that I like. I'm gonna put in 55 as my starting, and I'm gonna put in 89 here as my incoming. And you can see this is affecting the velocity here, and I'm gonna put in 55 going out, and 89 coming in. Okay, great, and I'm gonna preview this. And there you go. And that's it. So I've applied a little bit of easing here. The main thing I want you to get is that the anchor point is such a great opportunity. Use the uh, pan behind or anchor point tool. I do want to point out that it's really helpful to use this and manipulate your anchor point before you start animating. After you start animating, it can cause some problems, not with the scale property, but with the position property. It can throw off your animation. So just plan ahead a little bit 
and uh, you'll get some great results and be cruising. So thanks for watching, and I will see you soon.